Hi, if you own a 2005 to 2020 Nissan Frontier and you want to be able to do some work behind the grill, underneath the front bumper skin, this video is going to show you how to get that off of there. Secondarily, if you have the one piece plastic bumper cover and you're interested in chopping it in order to incorporate uh, a custom front bumper or winch, something like that, also going to look at that in the later part of this video. Disclaimer is I am not a mechanic, I'm not a professional in any way. I'm a total learn-as-you-go DIY guy. I just had to kind of figure it out as I went to get that bumper cover off of there because I couldn't find a video that really clearly showed all the steps. Hopefully you'll find it helpful. If there's something I didn't quite cover, put a question in the comments below. I'll answer it if I can. There are six plastic locking clips under the hood running the length of the grill. You can get a dedicated tool for popping these out, but I just use what I already have in my toolbox to work them out. Raise the middle part of the clip first, then the entire clip will lift out of the hole. Normally there are these lower valance pieces below the front bumper. I actually removed mine uh, shortly after getting the truck, so I don't have that step today. But basically there are also just some screws and some locking clips that hold it on. It's very easy to see, very, very simple to take those pieces off. Up underneath here, there are four 10 millimeter bolts. Right up in here, there are three more locking clips to remove. Now down in between the grill and the radiator, hopefully you can see, there is a locking clip there. And there. There's also one in the middle. So there's three locking clips kind of tucked down behind there. You gotta kind of pull the grill away a little bit to get at them. There are a couple of Phillips head screws which connect the fender liner to the bumper cover down here and up here. These need to come out. If you have factory fog lights, you'll have to reach in here and disconnect them from the housing and that's just about a quarter counterclockwise turn. The bulb with its wiring will pop right out of the housing. Let's see if I can show that better on this side. And once you've got this fender liner pulled back, there's another 10 millimeter bolt right up in there, and it sort of goes in this direction. Um, I'm really finding that tricky to get on. I'm using a little tiny folding driver. But I can't get my regular socket wrench up on there. I just have to do tiny little bits at a time. Maybe there's a better tool for this, but if there is, I don't have it. Yeah, so this little bolt in here going this way is not, uh, not fun, but it only took me, um, I really only had to break it loose uh, maybe about three quarters of a turn, and then I was able to uh, get it enough where I could just twist it out with my fingers, which was much easier. So after this bolt that's right here, there's actually another one further up in there. And I really had to pull that fender liner down out of there in order to get enough access to get my hands up in there. But same thing, a couple of quarter turns on that bolt and you can break it loose and then just back it out with your fingers. With those two bolts removed, you can see how it now pulls away there. And there it is. Now you're ready to work on whatever you need to do under there. The nice thing about the Frontier bumper skin is that there's an obvious spot to cut it off. In fact, on some Frontiers, this is actually two pieces. There's a metal piece here and plastic up there. On the back side here, you can see there are these extra sort of reinforcing pieces in the corner, and they are clipped on with these metal clips that are actually right along the seam line. As these reinforcing pieces are riveted in here pretty good, 
and maybe provide some structural support. I'm gonna just go ahead and cut the reinforcing piece off halfway through on both sides. So with those reinforcing pieces behind cut and those little metal clips removed, I'm ready to do the, the cut on the bumper skin itself. Now, when I did my Forester, I just went at it with the grinder. I followed a line and it worked fine. I had a lot of people scold me, told me I should have put tape on it. Um, and I thought it turned out fine, but uh, I went and looked at a couple of other videos of people trimming their plastic bumpers and most of them put tape. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tape it up with what I've got with painter's tape and we'll see if it makes a difference. I'm not too concerned either way. I think it's gonna be fine. Yeah, I can push that tape right down into the seam. I can see right where I want to go. Again, I am, I'm not necessarily the person whose advice you should follow. I'm just showing you what I did. All right, I just sort of loosely fitted the uh, bumper cover back up onto the truck because it just makes a nice solid place for it to stay put while I make the cut. I saw someone else do their frontier this way and it makes sense. It's much floppier when it's loose off the truck and I used a couple of, of the locking clips just to keep it in place here. So uh, yeah, point to no return here. In my haste on that first part, I forgot to put gloves on. When you run a grinder, you should definitely wear gloves, eye protection, hearing protection. Yeah, I do think the tape helped. I think it's cleaner along that edge, along that outer visible edge. Yeah. It's such an easy step. It's definitely worth uh, throwing the tape on there. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. Okay, well, I gotta say I'm quite pleased with how that cut came out. Very pleased. I did just a little bit of cleanup afterwards just to get some of the rough edges off. And uh, it looks, uh, that's a really nice clean straight cut following that seam. I think it looks good. So we're not quite done there. There are these um, metal brackets here that were supporting the lower part of the bumper skin and they're going to be in the way for whenever a winch comes in. So I'm just going to go ahead and deal with them now because they kind of look weird sticking out there anyway. And then we'll also have to do something with these fender liners. Now this whole bracket bolts on here. However, the upper parts of it um, support the upper part of the skin and the grill. I was originally thinking I could just unbolt this, take this whole thing off, but this upper piece, we definitely need to stay in place. And these lower pieces, unfortunately, are just welded on there. So I'm just gonna have to cut the metal off. There's just no way around that. There are a couple sort of weird, flappy, flimsy little pieces of plastic in here. I don't know if they're to direct airflow or to keep uh, stuff from getting into the engine compartment. They've got plastic clips there and there. I'm just gonna cut them off where the bottom of where they attach um, because they're not going to, down here this isn't going to do any good it's just going to flap around it's got no lower attachment point um, but that way the if they're serving some purpose up there they'll stay in place um, i can't quite get in there with the grinder so i'm actually going to remove them cut them off and then put them back on if you need to remove, repair, replace, modify your grill, 
um, there's just it looks like it just snaps into the bumper cover with those clips right there. Reassembly is just a question of fitting the cover back in place and popping the rivets back in. Be sure to replace the three rivets behind the grill before inserting the six across the top. Now it's just a question of getting those, uh, those two bolts back up in there. Oh, that was much easier than I expected to put those back in. Let's just snug those up. Okay, I've got that all put back together. Everything's attached, bolted, and secured. I haven't done the fender lanterns yet because I wanted everything into place so I could see exactly where things were positioned once everything was reattached. What I'm gonna need to do is create um, one or two new anchor points for this fender liner so that it's not flapping here. And then I will figure out a way to cut it off. So I just found a couple of spots where I could zip tie onto some holes in the metal framework that were here. And I just had to drill uh, some holes in the plastic. And that feels pretty good and solid. And once, uh, once I cut that off so the wind isn't really hitting it as badly, um, I think that'll be fine. Plus eventually, you know, there will be some sort of bumper here. I like to use the grinder for the plastic because it makes really short, easy work of it. And I also find it really easy to do a straight line with the grinder wheel. It kind of just keeps itself going in its own channel. But I don't quite have room to get in here with the grinder. And I wanted to get this attached before I did any cutting on it so I'd make sure I was, wasn't cutting off anything that I actually needed. So I'm just using the tin snips. Uh, this stuff is pretty thin and floppy. It's pretty easy cutting. For now, I'm kind of trying to follow some existing contours so that it looks sort of natural. Yeah, I guess that doesn't make a whole lot of sense like that. We'll just contour this around. Okay, with those fender liners trimmed and secured, that's pretty much what I wanted to get done today. Now I can really start thinking about uh, how I want that front winch mount and bumper to come together. It's so helpful for me just to be able to see what's under there and just spend some time thinking about it, visualizing. So I had one last little idea since I had those factory fog light wires, uh, I decided I could just throw my uh, diode dynamics lights on there in an existing hole in that bumper beam and uh, very easy to wire it up to the existing wiring and have a little bit of aux lighting for now until I get everything finished. Well, this is, this is only a temporary solution until I get this bumper thing figured out, but I will probably be out on some trips. And I know some of you may be worried about the radiator. I'll, uh, I'll make some sort of supplementary grill across here with some expanded steel or something, just to keep, uh, just to keep branches or something from reaching in there and poking and I have a little idea for something I'm gonna do here. So as long as that grill was off, I went ahead and removed that emblem. But something else will go there.